Over the years, I have been a member of seven Episcopal churches. St. John's is the largest among them. <clears throat> Since moving to Ellicott City in 1993, I've worked professionally for four parishes in the Diocese of Maryland. St. John's is the richest. This is not surprising given its location in Howard County, Maryland. In December, Forbes listed Howard County as the sixth wealthiest county in the United States with a median income of $121,160. Our ministry hails from a large campus of prime real estate, a gorgeous historic worship space, a day school and chapel, and we steward an endowment and investments handed down to us by earlier generations. Having said all that, our vestry is once again struggling to balance our operating budget in 2022. This is not a new phenomenon, nor a pandemic anomaly. Our giving at St. John's continues a time-worn particular pattern. Pledges trickle in well after the budget year has begun. Giving by some is based in personal satisfaction or disquieted emotions. Of course, there are always the quite generous. Still others recognize this place as their spiritual home, but do not pledge or support it financially. The disparity between our county's wealth and our giving patterns leave me wondering. Is St. John's rich? And what is it that Jesus might be saying to us today? After a little fishing on the Sea of Galilee, Jesus went up a mountainside to pray. As he descends the mountain, he stops at a level place, a plateau. Gathered there are his newly conferred apostles a wider group of disciples and a vast crowd. Already in these early days of his ministry, people are coming from far and wide to see Jesus. They want two things, to be healed and to hear him teach. So Jesus looks at his disciples and begins to speak to all of blessings and woes. To be blessed, is to know the joy of good circumstances given by God. God's blessing may occur immediately, such as when the empty nets were suddenly teeming with fish. A blessing can also be a future promise given in order to comfort or as a response to appropriate behavior. As we heard in Jeremiah's words, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water. They'll thrive. In social media, hashtag blessed often describes mundane happiness. I got a great pair of new jeans, hashtag blessed. But God's blessings are so much more. They impart profound spiritual joy and a prosperity meant for all. We are blessed so that we might be a blessing to others. As Jesus blesses, he names the reality of what is and the hope of what is yet to be. You who are poor now will receive the kingdom later. You who are hungry now will eventually be satisfied. You who weep now will laugh in days to come. You who are persecuted will receive an eternal reward. Jesus connects the present and the future in an already but not yet way. The full promise will be realized in the kingdom of God. Meanwhile, you are already blessed because you know Jesus now 
and are welcomed into the kingdom. Woes are warnings. They signal an impending danger if a change of behavior or attitude does not take place. Jesus is declaring that a reversal of this world's order will take place. The rich, well-fed, and those laughing will find emptiness, want, and sorrow. That is because in our self-reliance, the illusion that we are masters of our own fate, we forget our dependence on God. An attitude of independence from God is the road to destruction, Bach wrote. It reduces our capacity to experience divine grace. The woes then serve as a warning and a call of repentance to those who may be tempted to trust too greatly in wealth, comfort, and possessions. Well, where does that leave us? Most of whom are among the top 10% richest people in the United States. Well, first, it's important to note that the warnings Jesus gives are just that, warnings not condemnation, a blanket condemnation of the rich. It is the attitudes often displayed by the rich that makes the door to God's kingdom narrow. Contempt, arrogance, lack of compassion, and self selfishness. Taken in its entirety, the gospel does not condemn all who are wealthy. Zacchaeus, Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, and Jairus are clear examples that the rich are neither excluded from Jesus' ministry nor the kingdom of God. What is condemned is a misplaced focus that values only your own life and its possessions without concern for God's will or other people. Until we understand our own spiritual poverty, and our utter dependence on God's grace, woe to us. Jesus teaches that God's kingdom is grounded in justice and reconciliation. As disciples, we are meant to align our lives with the way of Jesus Christ. This requires embracing the dignity of every human being. It means shifting from a spirit of scarcity and fear and naming what is clearly an abundance that many people can only dream of. It includes looking at what has been with clarity and repentance and embracing what is yet to be because with God, anything is possible. So is St. John's rich? We've been given all we need, but we don't have enough giving for a God-sized budget. With a median income in Howard County of $121,160, using a marginal tax rate of 22%, if just half our members pledged 5% of their after-tax income, our budgeted income would be $1,887,000. This is $400,000 more than our God-sized budget for 2022 needs, and yet we fall short. Of course, you may say, not all members live in Howard County or make this median income, sure. And you might even be asking, why is the associate for pastoral care speaking math? It's simple. <coughs> Jesus taught that our relationship with money is a window into our soul. And it's also because the ministry of the church has burned sacred memories on my heart. Memories 
of the tearful eyes of an inmate behind plexiglass at the Baltimore jail as I told him his church would take care of his family. And the subsequent memory of holding his daughter's hand in, a, in, in an emergency room as her leg wound was debrided. I remember rebuilding hurricane-ravaged homes with a force of Episcopalians and the resilience and joy of orphans we serve in Honduras. The moments of grace as those once raped prayed together and spoke their truth and the palpable peace that washed over the repentant, absolved sex addict. I remember the hungry, traumatized children joyfully embraced and fed and the angelic voices of children singing doxology in their chapel prayers. Sure, I've experienced complicated conflict and bitter disappointment in parishes. The church, its leaders, and people are imperfect. But Jesus Christ's presence and power in our lives inspires me on. Memories of stunning worship that glorified God and elevated the spirit, the weeping turned to laughter and friends beyond compare, bless my soul. You see, I've witnessed the best the church can be. And I've seen individual lives transformed again and again and again by the good news of Jesus Christ. All of that has been grounded and is grounded in this fragile, brilliant, flawed, and fantastic thing we call Christian community. You, St. John's, have the potential now in 2022 to be a life-giving light and spiritual force in Howard County and well beyond. That's why I keep showing up with an expectant heart full of gratitude. I do hope you'll join me.